So, first of all, thank you for taking the time, setting up the gear and everything to talk with me. Uh, we started talking a couple of days ago, but I stopped you because it was the story was too good, and I wanted to record it. So, but if I if I may, I would maybe would like to go a little bit backwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. You were born in Paris, right? Yes. And although you lived a great deal of your life in the south, had married yes. and had kids and so on, and you're back back in Paris, in Paris. How does music appear in your life? Was it were you still very young, and was it always percussion, or did you have other loves in terms of music? No, it was growing up. It was in the family. Really, um, I never knew uh, my my grandmother, but she died. Uh, because of the Germans during the war. And she was violinist, violinist and she, she used to move and to turn around to play on, on weddings. Because she was like, like she was like a Polish. folk musician. Yes, because um, she was up north, close to Lille. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, was a, there were uh, many communities coming from Russia, Polish people, and my grandmother was uh, come from Ukraine. Okay, so your your grandfather was a, a Polish folk violinist. Yes. Wow, moving in the in the north of France. Yes. But you never you never met him. He died during the Second World uh, War. Yes, she died. My mother was six. Your grandfather. Or my, your grandmother? My, my grandmother, the violinist, okay. she died. Okay. When my mother was six. That's that's quite rare, right? A female folk violinist. Uh, no, it, no, it, uh, because um, they had a they had a place, a big restaurant, and they mm -hmm. used to organize uh, uh, my grandmother and all the family. Um, uh, her brother played trumpets, drums, everything. So wow. they, they turn around and, and and at this place, you can eat and dance and. Uh, it was a special place for people coming from Russia. I didn't know. It, 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 this is, we talked about so many things and I didn't know about that. So, yeah. so did you, and did you go into folk music? Or no, what, what was um, your... it? It was in, in my parents' mind because um, um, they love music, but they didn't learn music. So they wanted mm. the, the, the children to, to learn music because the, grand, the grandfathers used to play music, see? Wow. Uh -huh. So you, you went to the conservatory or local school? Yes, or? Yeah. conservatory really early. So I, st I started to, to learn music. I, I, at the same time, I learned to, to write and read. At seven, I, I didn't make the difference between uh, read music and read, uh, you understand? <laughs> so it's great. I, I did the same for my kids. <laughs> Yes. Wow. And what, what, what did you learn first? Piano or something like that? Clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? Not much. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then from, from clarinet, you went to percussion? No, directly? Um, I'm, it was a bit hard because my, my parents uh, wanted really uh, me to, to keep the, the clarinet. So they said, all right, you want to start drum? You're gonna continue clarinet for one year, and we'll see after. So, so they want you, they want you to to play a proper musical instrument. Yes, but um, the most important is they ju they just buy a expensive clarinet yeah. just before I changed my mind. So they said <laughs> during one year, no, we won't buy a drums kit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So I bought it by myself, but anyway, the drum kit. Yes. <laughs> was it was it because it was it about rock and roll, the passion for the drum kit, or was it jazz? Or no, no, no. Um, it's funny because it, it, it at first it came from uh, the conservatory, because the room of percussions was just next to the the room of clarinet, and I, I saw many many pictures, and I loved them because there were many instruments. Mm. Yeah. That's what I like. So 
the deal was um, I'm going to con con continue percussion and clarinet at the conservatory, and I could have uh, private uh, lessons on drums, real yeah. just real jazz drum. So for many years, after I left the, the clarinet and I studied percussions and drums parallelly. Uh -huh. Both for many years, for about six years. Okay. But oh, it man. was really great, really great because it makes a difference at the yeah. end. Yeah. Mm. All, all the, um, the rock band could hear that I was, uh, I, I was a different drummer. I see. That's so cool. And yeah. all, of this, all of this was Paris. Um, I, I moved to Australia <laughs> to play drums. And yes, I was 16. You moved just, to Australia at 16 I, to play drums? Yes, because um, um, uh, my, my, my sister, she married an Australian and the family are really big in Australia. So mm -hmm. um, some of my brother-in-law by wedding were uh, musicians and they used to play in bands. So I mm -hmm. came in at 16, I, I make some tries, and two years after, I start to work in Australia. So I, I came on as a, time. as a musician or doing it? Yes, 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 in a band. Wow, wow, yes. wow. So you crazy. toured, you toured I, in Australia? I, I've been on tour for about six or seven months, earning my own money. It's incredible, just incredible. What? Well, let's let's have it. What was the year that that happened? What was the year? Just to uh, give us a... 18... 80, it was just after the election of uh, Mitterrand. 80, 81. Okay. 1981. Uh, just uh, uh, Mitterrand arrived. I couldn't follow the, the politics because I was in Australia. And no information, no news from France. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no internet? <laughs> no. <laughs> just phone and phone at night time to a yeah. morning. It was really and really expensive. Yeah, but really a big start in mm. as professional. Interesting. Yeah. And then, then, because I, I want to to come to your doctoral because that's really interesting. Mm? But I show you see, the, the books you should have. Yeah. But since, since, <laughs> but since we are, <laughs> since, wow, just, wow, 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 wow. Just a thousand that's, and that's fifty. How much, that's how much I should write. Yes, a uh, thousand and fifty pages. Wow, 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 Three, wow. 360 for, for the text mm -hmm. and seven and more for the pictures and docs and okay. everything. Okay. <laughs> before, <laughs> we, before we get there, um, You work, you, you, so at 16, you're touring Australia. You hadn't, have you finished conservatory by then? Just, yeah. At 18. And then you go to pursue music at university? How did that? Uh, well, well uh, uh, on, on, uh, on the way back. Yeah. Yes. So what, what did you study at that time? No, nothing. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't interesting because I was down south and it was only religious music. But you did it. No, I, I just did one year because uh, the director was all the time with the, with the bishop, spending all this time, the, the bishop of a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was crazy about religious music. He, he, he did the program, but it wasn't interesting. So I, uh, I've done one year study, but for nothing. Because mm. at, at this time, you, should, um, you shouldn't cut your study over uh, before uh, the, the, the first two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at this time, at the end of, of this first year, I, I went back to Paris to, uh, to, to, uh, to start to work for um, uh, WEA. What is that, WEA? It was B, um, um, Record Factory. OK. It was before Universal. Okay. What what W E A is mm -hmm. uh, Warner 
electro ah, okay. okay 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 Warner. yeah right and and you what did you do there what was your playing drums Tr playing drums ah. for for um I was teaching um, down south. I was teaching percussions and drums in a in a small uh, school, and the the teacher of guitar sent some uh, tapes to Paris and got a signature signature, mm. got a contract yeah, for yeah, one yeah. for one L LP as a session musician. No, we I... were we were just two. So mm. did all the guitars, all the voices, and I, I did all the rhythmics, bass guitar, uh, drums, and uh, some synthes. Wow. And after, when, we, uh, when we, we've been on a, sh a TV show, we, <laughs> we took two of the clowns to accompany, to, to accompany us. See? Yeah. I found yeah. another friend drummer playing yeah. bass. He doesn't. He did. He couldn't play <laughs> bass. <laughs> yeah. To to simulate that we were a band, but we yeah, okay. we weren't a band. But it was really funny. Do you enjoy it? Those years? Uh, yes, but I stopped just at the right moment. Okay. Because um, the only thing was interesting for me it was uh, all the technical part. See. Mm. Uh, to record on studio, uh, to prepare music sheets and everything. But um, in this factory record, um, most of times they, they work on concept, on uh, clothes, on makeup, mm. yeah. strategy, commercial strategy. And I wasn't interested in it because I've heard some shocking things. Mm. Okay, I, I, I wasn't con concerned in this. I yeah, was concerned yeah, yeah, yeah. by the music, by not by the, the rest. Yeah, yeah. So how how does it all work that you end up doing a PhD? Um, you go back south? No, I'm, I'm I I had for heritage uh, a big uh, old house up north. Mm -hmm. in France, mm -hmm. in this uh, country called uh, La Somme, mm -hmm. where there were many battles during the WW1. And um, I have to, to repair this house and to live in it. Mm -hmm. But in this country, there's no job, nothing, nothing to do, just yeah. to work, uh, to work for, for the farm. There's only one or two farms, you know. So um, I started to, to learn music to, to, to children because there were many asked for it. So yeah. I, start, I, start, yeah, yeah. I started my own uh, music school at home. Yeah. And my kids start to go to school and I wanted to play music at school with them. See? Mm -hmm. So I start to do it, but one year, after one year, two years, the director, the director came to me and said, um, the law change. You need some uh, diploma from university. Mm. So I know you start. Can you just make a new inscription to be covered, mm. to continue? Yes. So that's what I said. Uh, so that's what I, I did. I, um, um, I went to um, University of Lille. And, uh, and I restart, I was about uh, 36. Okay. So I restart a uh, license. Then after master one, master two. And in master one, they asked me to, um, to find a, a topic for research. And I was in Lille, I was really interested by uh, technical tools that sounds and uh, I knew that the museum um, uh, de Perron, uh, War Museum, WW1 War yes. Museum, close to my place, I knew that uh, I, I, couldn't, I could find a subject about phonographs or something like that, you know, on, on technical sound. So I didn't record, I start. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> no worries. I can I can restart mine as well. That's good. Because this way we have the second the second part of our interview already covered. So uh, I went yeah. to I went to the museum to ask for yeah. a topic, yeah. and they, pre they present me this object here. Aha! Uh -huh. Can you see it? Yeah. It's a shallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made, made in the trench, but it was a uh, it was a bit uh, broken, and it was ugly. Yeah. And mm. uh, I, I I said, uh, Are you sure? Um, that's all you have because um, I'm not really interested and I'm not, I can't play solo. Mm. Yeah. But uh, one, of, one of the person in place said to me, oh, there's a solo, but hang, hang on. You got this book with it. And I turned the pages of the book. It was the notebook from the soldier who built um, the cello. Wow. He wrote every day. Every day, every day of the war during five years. He described all about his life, musical life in the trench. How he built, he, he gave plans of how he built the shallow. After he made many copies for friends, after he, he, he started an orchestra and start some tours around, all around in the camps different camps. All of this in the trenches? From trenches to trenches. Yes. Wow. It was just beside the, the, the battlefield. Yes, and yes, of course, yeah. Just, just, just to... But the, the most important, the instrument was not, was interesting, in, interesting, but not nice. Of but course. The book, the book was really impressive. Because mm. nobody could read the book. Because he cut all the words, like um, C for uh, cello. Cello in French is violoncelle. Mm -hmm. So he, he used to write a big V with uh, an, a big V and on, on the top, E L L E. It is all, all the, the words were shortened. Yeah, was it, do you think it was? To be to write faster, no, no, or to it, save space. No, it, it was shortened by a musician, so a musician could understand, but not ah. uh, anybody. Okay. So, so I understood that it was really interesting because my work was there. They really need me. Nobody, yeah. nobody else, no an historian could work on it. You have to be musicologist to to uh, to describe. To, to uh, open all this uh, this book and to understand everything he said, but so he, he used he used the system of shortening words. Yes, as uh, yeah. he, actually, um, he wrote for nobody, just for himself. Yeah, you know, his inten intention wasn't to uh, to give a, a legacy. He just wrote every day. Uh, sometimes it, it was really um, embarrassing because um, it, um, this morning, son, just rehearsal with in this one and this guy. And uh, at that time, play for the colonel. Sit, point. Mm, yeah. Every day, every day, every day. But over five years, um, it's a really good, it was a really good start to to re to, to write and to rebuild the musical history French history during the World War because if you open now a book of history uh, historical of um, um, mu uh, French music during 1914 until 1918 there's nothing in civilian life yeah. there were nothing all you 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 have is uh, many orchestra, French orchest orchestras uh, went to, to play in America or to Spain, you know, to get yeah. some money for the soldiers. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All, 
all the many, it, it, there were about more than 5,000 people um, uh, graduate from the conservatory, the great uh, uh, Parisian conservatory. They, they've been involved in the WW1. Yeah, they've, they've been they've been trapped from a life to another one. Mm. Yeah. And nobody knows what they did. Yeah. What it's, it's difficult to after one cemetery uh, to uh, one century to uh, to tell to uh, French people, hang on, your French history about the WW1 is not the one you learn at school. Actually, musicians did their job, but many, many professionals from one job, one section, well, they, they still live at the front, not, not just fight. It was yes. a, a, a curious war just to wait to wait in the trench. Yes, well, really. Uh, I hate when people said, uh, usually in France, we, we, we teach to children, the first war, we won it. The second, we lost it. You know why? Because they want to tell to children, the first war, we, we won it because we, we haven't been inv inv invited by Germans. But the second, we've been invited. We suffer from Hitler, mm. but it's not true. Up north was occupied by Germans first, but I think we didn't win this war. They lose the war. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We just we all we we've done is wait in the trench, wait. yeah, and play music, and to have fun, and to find a new life in the country. Than, than most of, or, or of them uh, had forgot, see? Yeah. And the Germans were just, they, they went just to, to, to win. Yeah, so. They just, the, the, those, those boys just wanted to go home. Yes. They they, yeah, they were they in wanted a, to, another nation. To fight, fight, to, fight yeah. to win and to go back home. Yeah. But they, yeah. they came in front of people installed in a new life in the country, <laughs> <laughs> having cinema, with music, because many uh, rich people in France, they, they get, they, they send money to um, to have system to project to have a cinema uh, running all around the camp to have, to to give this distraction to 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 um, to soldiers. Yeah, it's a, it's a big enterprise to uh, when you when you it's, look at all the docks. It's impress impressive to to see it, our it. It reminds me of, of centuries before in France, Spain, Portugal, everywhere, Germany. Uh, the, in the medieval times, the war of siege, when you came to, to do a siege to conquer a castle, you had the people inside the castle that was just waiting. And then you also had the, 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 the point was, how long can you wait outside until they start to they 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 give up, so there and was this enormous you know enormous apparatus of 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 civilians as well that would come to cook and to entertain and so on. It was <laughs> like like the circus arrived to the castle. Now we'll just we'll be here until we start starving or something. And and it's interesting how we even with the with the first world war that has to do with the the modernization of war with air with uh, airplanes and so on. It's interesting how this mentality of, well, we have been here for centuries. They can come and try to conquer us, but we'll just, we'll just wait here. Yes. Until so, they leave somehow, yeah, and stand, yeah. And uh, for example, the, uh, at start of, of the thesis, um, in the three first months, it was really a butchery. We lost many men, but, the most important for me, I suppose, um, we lost near all our instrument, military instrument. They were broken. So, says really? a, yeah, a writer 
who had a newspaper in Paris, heard the news, and he, he asked to his reader to send instrument, just instrument, phonographs, or uh, lyrics, or uh, partitions, and some stuff for musician. So he, he wrote this in the newspaper, and two weeks after, he was fed up of instrument. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't send all this, this stuff to the trenches because it was so much. The reactions of people, it was inc just incredible. The list of the things, you can't believe it. Everybody uh, send everything. You, you, you have a trumpet just uh, in an old uh, cupboard. Uh, send the trumpet to the, to the soldier. Yeah. So <laughs> everything could be sent. The post, yeah. the, post um, the mail worked really hard during the war to send some food, but to send some instrument and many things. So it was a good start for, for the first months of the war. But and after, and after, what is important is, um, is all the people around the soldier, how they react. First, all, all the uh, church people see near the trenches in the country, you always have um, some little chapels all around. Yeah. So you have an harmonium in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the priest, they, they're quite good to, um, to, to find some musicians to come to play mm -hmm. on many occasions. Yeah. See? So on this way, and on these places, different places, um, um, the religion will be the link between military music and mm -hmm. um, classical music coming from the conservatory, because most of the uh, musicians coming from the conservatory wasn't involved in military music. They were mm -hmm. just simple soldiers. Yes. So to join the military music, make the make the fact that you're not a fighting soldier yes yeah. to get in military music you have to you have to do your service your three years service before the war yes but most of them didn't do that so yeah. they were simply soldier ready to go to to the fight so yes. to go to the church to show his talent was a way to to join the military music and to get out of, of the war. See? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And all those people, so uh, church people, but also, also um, the graduate, uh, graduate, uh, graduate people, um, colonel, mm -hmm. captain. Yeah. yeah. They were so close from the from the soldier, then they, they gave authorization, for example, for this cellist to get some mm -hmm. wood. Because to get um, to um, any piece of wood is interesting on the battlefield. Mm. Because to consolidate the trenches. Yes. Yeah. So you can't take a piece of, of good wood and to do anything. You have to ask to the colonel, to the captain. Yeah. And they accept. See my, the arco of the, of the cello? Yeah. They cut the tile of the... Uh, Colonel Hoss. He, like, he, he accepted that. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And yeah, it was for a, a, for a good purpose. Yes. Yeah. And anyway, he wanted his music at night time when the, the, when the, the, the day was fin finished. Yeah. As they drink some alcohol, have coffee and everything. Bit, yeah. And they invite a musician to come to play for us. Yeah. Quite a good so, life, anyway. So, so during your research, what you started to have a much, a much more real picture of what was those years were, and yes. what it meant for the for the people, and this what you're saying that it was one thing for you to be a, a career military man as as a musician, and the other thing was that. You were doing your conservatory or you were a professional musician and then 
first world war just got you and took you to the to the front and at one point you just, this is not for me what am i doing here i'm a musician if only i could at least survive this thing by doing what i love you know and um and those are, are incredible stories and you started compiling those informations or or also but you were also concentrated on this storyline of this diary of this man oh, how my, did it go it was the big problem of my um, my thesis okay. and um, i received reproach because I, I i was supposed to work on this list but i wanted to take all the the, the history yes see but i needed a team you need a team you yes need, you need an acoustician you need an organologist you need an ethnologist because you have many yeah. exchange I I, I I i i spoke about many things around this cellist but i couldn't be specialist of everything yes yeah yeah but um one thing result from this history is that none of them uh, stop music. Yes. All of them, they just different at different speed rebuild their musical life in the country. Yes. Mm -hmm. To compose, to build instrument, to rehearse with other musicians, to um, to search because they were exchanged by uh, exchanged by later to know where is uh, my friend playing this yes. instrument. Yeah. And to try to um, to recompose. Uh, it was really interesting that only in five more than five thousand musicians, I found just one exception who who proves the the rules. Yes, yeah. this one yeah, yeah. from the first day of the war. He find um, a place to be hid, to to be uh, not to be shot. Yes, yes. He was he, he was um, the gardener of a railway station, a really really small railway station. Yes. And he was a ground ground com composer, and people around him said, "You'd be good there. You you'd be quiet. You, you yes. You'll be you'll safe. be safe. Yeah." So he's they the arranged one, for it. Yeah. He's the only one. He didn't do anything. He didn't have the um, the enthusiasm for composing, for playing, just watching the train coming, turning in one side from another, one side. And he, or, he was so sad about that. And af after after the war, did he go back to do yeah. the compo composing? He go back to he composed, but during the war, he heard he just, that. Even that, that the other could play and exchange, and yeah. for him nothing, because he was alone. Yes. No instrument, yeah. no friends, uh, and no inspiration. Yes. Interesting. But so, it's so only it, one case. So you tracked one. you tracked down thousands of people. You were able to, you you tracked. So when you st you you spoke about five thousand. Yes, more than five thousand. So and you. You went after all those stories, trying to but understand. Not all, but a large. I made a. We call it organigram. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Who organigram during yeah. five years? Who meet? Who, and who play with who? Yes. To make a, a larger one, the more larger uh, organigram to to see. Which one was there? Which which one build an orchestra or not? Or see, that, and he, that, he, can't, he can't cover. He can't cover the, the five more than five thousand. But you can you can have an you idea. Get a picture. Yeah, you, you've got yeah. an idea of the activity, and it's, it's just crazy because the cinema arrived after two years. Oh, no, first after the first year of war, they decide to um, to. Um, the French government to start um, the theater for soldier. Mm -hmm. So some groups, but for theater you need musician. So they yes. put musician on place. See, yes. So it's another bound, and after the cinema. 
So another, another bond, you know, a progressing pro, a step by step is growing yeah. and growing. And at the end, at, at the end, the last line on the book, um, the cellist was really annoyed and uh, embarrassed because he didn't know what he could find on the way back. Mm. His activity, his musical activities were so tough at the end of the war that he asked question, yes, but in civilian war, somebody took my place. Yes. Here, I work. Yeah, what will, well, what will become of me in, in this new life that no one knows what it will be, yeah. What kind of cities will I find back and, and how will life have organized yeah. itself? They, they, they were, they so, knew about the new, the new organization of the civilian life. So, so this, this man survived and finishes his diary. Yes. With this sort of question. Yes. And just shuts a, a part of his life. And, and could you find him afterwards? He's, After the last line of the diary, did you yes. have more information about his life? Yes, I, um, I, um, I, I made lots of interviews of, um, of his, his daughter. Okay. Yeah. She was, um, uh, she was te teaching composer, com composing at the conservatory, the Parisian, the superior one. You, you know what, what, I, what I mean? Yes, yes, totally, yes, yes, yes. So she, she made her career in the conservatory as a composer. And she gave to the museum the cello and the book. <laughs> so as, um, I translate the book, half, and uh, when I arrive at the half, the director of the museum said, oh, you can have the address and the telephone. You can go to see her. But she was 92. Yeah. Living alone in a small apartment with grand piano, taking all the place. <laughs> How can a man 40 years old can come inside? Hmm. I took Alice. She was 10. And when... Ah. She, when she, when she saw it for the first time, she, she started Your daughter, crazy. your daughter, yeah. Yeah, it was just excellent, really. Yeah. <laughs> because Alice was already a musician. She was 10, she played flute. And Madame Gervais, this, uh, this woman, she started to get crazy about Alice and to, uh, to buy her some books, uh, you know, something. Yeah. She, was, she didn't have children. And uh, we had many, many good times together. It was really funny. What, what do I remember we having a, co a conversation before I, where I already had these ideas of doing a PhD. Mm -hmm. And I, one of, one thing you told me st stayed with me and probably don't remember. Maybe now, now we'll remember that you told me. What you told me is that on the other side of the PhD, when you finish, the important thing is that you have grown. Yes. Is that in a way you mature, you said you become a man. But, but you meant it in a different way, right? You, you meant it in a, in a spiritual, intellectual way. You, you become a fool. You become more, or, or more, more whole, right? Mm. Is that what you take from your PhD experience? Is that growing up inside or, or what? Why should people start a PhD or why, why, why do you think? I don't because, know, but uh, mm. at, at the end, when you, you have um, some souvenir coming from mm. uh, shyness. And uh, one was important. I was in college and uh, at, the moment, at the moment of the, the orientation, see, the mm -hmm. teacher said, what do you want to do uh, next year? You can uh, do this or this, what do you want to do? And um, we could 
asked some questions and I, I received a punish, punishment, punishment mm -hmm. because yes. I asked my teacher how to get monk. Okay. And I, I, he thought that I was joking to amuse the classroom, but not, I was serious. What diploma you need to be monk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this souvenir came back because young, I wanted to be, uh, to, to, to live safe, quiet, do my job. Yes. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think do you think you have accomplished that? Uh, uh, have, you have, have you accomplished that that you plan somewhere, to do? somewhere, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because it's oh. uh, it's it's a it's a long and hard job and you have to um to be uh, accrushed to it. Yes. Attached yes. to it. Yes, yes, yes. And it's uh, uh, And it's life. It's part well, of life. Life, life it should be it should be built with patience. Mm. And to work, Tell me. to work your patient alone in a small place, it's, it's, yeah. it's not really important. What is important is to real to to carry out it. Yeah, yeah. And I also, you also told me a little bit, but as I stated in the beginning, I didn't want you to give me any more details because I wanted to do this interview. So there's, a, there's, there's been a, a new update. Uh, so you finish your research in 2010. 10. So uh, more than 10 years ago. And this past year, some young people came to you because to talk to you about your research. Oui, That's yes. so interesting. Um, yes, I forgot that. Um, when I, when I su su uh, supply uh, my, um, when I support my, my PhD, it was on 2010 and uh, the aim was mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to do lots of conference between yeah. the commemorations of 1914 to 1918 and it works because i've been to portugal to spain to to england yeah. to germany uh, it was a good tour, good tour yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. to talk about it and uh, to, and to, to 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 write articles to to be known yes yes mm -hmm. but um after at the end of it 20 20 uh, 20 2019 2019 yeah it was the end of it the the trend the trend was gone yes no more need <laughs> to speak about first world yes. war yeah yeah and um a student uh came to me and to to ask me but how could they leave music in a coffin and uh, locked down in in mm -hmm. the trench is the same way uh, we live now on uh, our musical life mm -hmm. um, uh, a young musician yeah a, a young student in musicology yeah so he yeah. was he's looking for um, a topic mm -hmm. so he came to me and he want he wanted to um he wanted my uh, my thesis so i sent him uh, my thesis mm -hmm. to uh to to find out where, what you, it could be interesting to link to this period mm -hmm. now. So it is, it, it's quite remarkable that this young student, he has created in his, in his well, in his, in his researcher's imagination, we can also say that, right? As an hypothesis, as a, a, a startup uh, question for his research, this connection between what the musicians experienced between, uh, during First World War and what we are living now, everyone in confinement during the COVID pandemic. Yes, and, because and it, it, yeah. may, many young searchers uh, works on this now. Yes. 
Okay, very topical. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, his director said, "You should do the same as the other. Yeah. Find new way in this sort of topic, but work on this period, your period. You, you, yes. you, you are, you are living it now. Yes. But I saw it was last year." And last year we if he came to my to my place with my son and he stayed here for three or four days. Mm -hmm. And at night time we've been talking about uh, my thesis. Wow. And after he made the link. But at night time and dinner time, we've been talking about uh, uh, this cellist life and how he, he gets the enthusiasm to 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 do uh, to, to practice music and to, to rebuild musician yeah. life. And this young man and your son, what, uh, what, what is their age? How old are they? My son, About... 20, 22, and Luca, 20. 22. So... Luca is really young. 20 is so, really young. Yeah, they, they, they were born in 2000. Yeah. <laughs> when you talk to them, what do you see? Um, and and I, I make this question, you can answer any way you want, but I meant more in the sense that in my heart, First World War was yesterday. Yes. But I don't think that they feel it that way. I was born in 1979, but, uh, and uh, First World War and Second World War, just as time periods, or even the turn of the 19th century. The older I get, the more it seems like it was yesterday. Mm. When, when, I, when I was 10 years old, 15 years old, I could maybe relate with movies and so on and the history of Second World War because it had a direct, I mean, we are still living with the, with the Berlin Wall. So there is, there is still a clear reference. Mm. You know, this, and we have the Soviet Union and so on. But not with First World War. First World War was strange. It was a little bit more, you know, the, the field recordings, black and white, were not so good. You know, and it was not so, I was not so interested as a, as a teenager on, on that part. But as life progresses and I get older, it seems like time compresses. And I can imagine myself... Be, is, is it too weird that I say, I can imagine myself being there. It's like, it's like, it's not, life has not changed that much. No. It's just, a, um, just a few technologies and cell phones, but yeah. people are essentially the same. People are the same. I have this story, see? Um, they had little notebook, all the soldier, mm -hmm. but that big, see? To put on the pocket here. Mm -hmm. And this notebook, is to write uh, um, just many things of the days uh, or the weather or thing. You can write uh, what you want. And it's double pages like this. And you have a little string. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And you can pull up the two pages like this, pull in two other, and yes. exchange with your neighbor. All right? Yes. Yeah. So, the great one was this was an iPod. Yes. <laughs> yes, because there were many songs you can write, uh, wrote, written on the tune of. See, all the soldiers write songs all the time because they write songs about them. I'm a walker. Sur le pont to sing on the Sur le Pont d'Avignon, and he write what he lives with his friend. Yeah. If the words are funny, the, sh the shit will be circulate all around. See? Yeah, yeah. So they pull up the, and they exchange, and it's so funny because without iPod, they add iPod. With playlists, yeah. it's, it's the yeah, 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 yeah. playlist, yeah. the same system. Incredible, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so when you talk with them, 
When you look into their eyes, what do you see? How do you think they perceived? They are perceiving First World War through your words and through your work and through the sources. Is it so foreign for them? Is it foreign? It's it, like it's, it wasn't even this century. <laughs> What do you think? No, maybe I think he, um, they find it more uh, less ugly at first, mm -hmm. and um, they understand now how much they were inventive. Mm -hmm. Yes, people at this yes. time more inventive at this at this time than now. Yes. Mm. That, that's profound. That's a profound change, I think, in, mm -hmm. in their generation. If they start seeing that, if they start seeing it that way, you think? I think it, it will, um, this, the, um, their mind will be back. Uh, 60s, 70s, 80s are not, um, are not years for um, inventive, you know? Mm, I mean, yes. for all the people, mm. all the mass, just watching TV, uh, buy things, eat, to consume, you know? But yes, it, 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 it was not introspective. It was about looking outwards, you think? Mm. And you think that your, your son's generation are, I think, no, I think this, after 20, I think it's coming back because, um, okay. because I, I think the most important is the emergence of um, Africa. Mm. Ah, my, yes. son, my son, he was eight, he was in front of TV watching um, an African in a small bag uh, uh, um, Working on the uh, the motive, the the mo, to to um to pilot. Mm, uh, it's yes. a, a cafe machine. It's uh it's water. It's cleaning. Uh, uh, by is just is um mobile. Yes. You know, he was mm. really fa fascinated by these people living. In a, in a country, there's nothing, but just with a, uh, an iPhone, they can calculate things or uh, uh, pilot a, a remote, use their phone as a remote for mm -hmm. all their small barracks. There's nothing in it, just a coffee machine or uh, an alarm clock, something like that, you know. And what, what, what did he tell you about that? How do you express that, that fascination, your son? You say he was eight. He was impressive because he had he have all that. The other yes. one had nothing, but his mind is, is at the first place. Yeah. They're smart people. Yeah. I think the mass is all the masses are um, not um, not enough in, in inventive. See mm. what happened in the favelas, mm -hmm. COVID. They just left them like this with nothing. They yeah. organized all, 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 all by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they, uh, they make their own series, TV series in favelas. I've, I've heard many things about <laughs> favelas, like banks, ATM machines, uh, yeah, commerce, everything. Like their own, their own bank system, if, if, yeah. if you need it, yeah. But filming... It's, it's like civ ci civilizations within civilizations. Exactly. And that, that, so, that's, fascina that's fascinating as well. Yeah, but we know that it's dangerous. Yes. It inside the state. For, totally. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is that there's also a state outside the state, so <laughs> why not a state inside the state? You understand what I mean? That, that was yeah. with yeah. That, that is uh, we before the the reproach to Jews. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we discussed that a couple of or, days ago. Or the Italian mafia. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The same. If you can control, that's all right. But if you can't control, yes. <laughs> you're lost. <laughs> well, we're, we're getting getting quite political. Now I'm thinking about the, the Latin America. Uh, it's, it's also, some countries have thought that they, they could control Latin America. So it was interesting to, to let, uh, you know, for, the, for example, the, the drug cartels, mm. uh, we, could, we can use them. They work until for they us. until they get a mind of uh, of their own and then and then uh, yeah anyways <laughs> <laughs> so so this I'm curious so this this cellist that wrote that amazing diary that you had the opportunity mm -hmm. to explore and to and to and to bring light to I have a... so he married and had I now I want to 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 know the rest of the story. So he married, he had at least one daughter Two. that became a composer. Oh, Two. At, uh, when, uh, at the start of the war, he was on tour. He was mm -hmm. uh, in Amsterdam playing with uh, the orchestra of uh, Les Concerts à l'Amoureux, mm -hmm. one of the biggest in Paris. And he was on tour. So he received the message to join, uh, to join uh, back France. And her, her wife was with him, and she was already pregnant. Mm. Okay. So um, he had no permissions during two years. And uh, after two years, he, he, come, he came back home and did the second girl. Mm. And uh, she hasn't been a musician at all. Just the first one. Interesting. And no, no, no children too. Hmm. No dissonance. Interesting. And did so so he found a way to do you think that for the most part these musicians found a way to to, to reconstruct their lives and to and to continue to be musicians, right? Yes. After the war. M much of them uh, couldn't do uh, something else. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And after, uh, between, so between the, the two wars, uh, he started to, um, to, ima to imagine, to, uh, to, to he, he, um, he was um, at the front, he, be, he became um, a ch an enterprise chief. He mm -hmm. wasn't before. Before, he, he was just a musician in a big orchestra. At okay. the front, he started to, 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 to build one instrument, another one, another one, to make an orchestra and, and everything. Yeah. So when he came back, he was in the same way. Mindset. Think. Yeah, the so, same mindset. He bought uh, a little house uh, on the coast. Yeah. And he install, install an, a, show, um, a little saloon to receive some uh, rich people to, um, to hear music. And he had a quartet, and uh, his, his wife was a um, pianist too. Mm -hmm. Ah. So um, between the two wars, he, he had this. Uh, personal enterprise see yeah i think he, he he wouldn't do that if he didn't live where he lived at the front yes yeah yeah he was about uh, uh 30 and he, yes he came back about 35 something like that just uh, he was not very young already. Yes, for the no, for the war front. Yes, because um, because he did the conservatory, and he was mm -hmm. middle people. Hmm. Yeah. Well, 
So what are you research? What are you researching now, after going through that doctoral process and during doing the the paper during the years afterwards during the, doing lectures and and hmm, okay. I'm coming back for the next episode. <laughs> okay. So when I start my PhD. I didn't stop to, to write already, but I started different folders. And I was mm -hmm. talking with my director and I found some, some docs and I said to her, I don't dream. For the first time, drum skit arrived during the first world, world war. And she said, but it's not now your problem. See all the works you, you have to do. Mm -hmm. But I, I put my finger on this date. 1917, okay. no French musician have ever seen a drum kit. Okay. And the first one arrive, arrived in the North by Americans. Okay. So I understood <laughs> that, but it was, um, it was slipping in my mind during all the PhD. And at the end, now 20, um, 2011, mm -hmm. I found some docs and I start to, um, to, um, to answer to call, or, or, or call for paper about drum, the birth of drum kits. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was um, a good a good way to uh, to continue my PhD. Yes, because um, if 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 I if I was another, if I didn't do the PhD yes. on the, on this musical life during during the, the WW one, I couldn't have enough information to work on the subject. Yes, yeah, yeah, because. My musicians were free to do the drums part. Yes. Bass drum, tenor drum, and cymbal. What else? Okay. Yeah. So the string instrument, the war is not finished, that uh, the first kits arrived. But at the end of the war, then there's not so much. Mm -hmm. Musicians left, yeah. see for the orchestra and for for the money. It's interesting to have one guy playing for three guys. Yeah, even for the room in a theater. Yeah, it's important. So it's different elements you have to put together to understand how drum kit, drum set take part of the orchestra become. A little orchestra inside the orchestra. Yeah, and that's that, that's what you're working right now. Yes, and uh, the most interesting is um, another thing is to to use, for example, to use a, a pedal. Nobody use a, a mechanical system for, for yeah. instrument in music, but with the war, with the handicap, we saw some uh, uh, men band. You know? Yeah, one man band. Yeah. One man band. Well, yeah. The and one man band, one guy losing his arm, playing uh, an instrument, and um, use a system, mechanical system, to, to, to play his music. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And people accept this idea that a musician can use a me mechanical system to play music. Yeah. Yeah, they accept it, yes. Yeah. As a, as a, as a part of life. So so you think there's a relationship between Completely. between the veterans, the veterans mm -hmm. and actually people looking into mechanical systems of yes. activating instruments and and not seeing it, it as a fake performance, right? Mm. In France, the soul um, soldier injured 
mm. repaired by system. Yeah. This yeah. Is books and books and pictures and pictures because it, it was interesting uh, for the money to, 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 to build this mat these materials. See? Yeah, ma ma masks. I saw, I, saw, I saw pictures on masks and. Yes, but uh, fake hands. Yes, yes, prosthetics. Yeah, prosthetics. Uh, with with some systems to uh, to 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 uh, to scratch mm, or grab to, to grab or yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're working on that. Do you see Do you see an end? Do you have a milestones for that? Uh, or do Do you have an idea of times of time uh, of a chronogram for your for our research? Or you're doing it, you're doing it independently, right? You yes. took your your doctoral was at Sorbonne, yes. Was it? Mm -hmm. Now now you're working as a as a you're doing your own research. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm, I'm 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 not fi I haven't finished that. Yeah, so yeah. The drum kits are built in mass, in manufactory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Germany, from um, especially uh, from uh, USA, mm -hmm. they arrive in Europe. Yeah, but there's no men to play. Yeah, so there's no drummers. <laughs> <laughs> so they start to to um, to put many many advices to sell drums to kids, but especially to women. Really? Yes. <laughs> we lost the, the oldest one last year. Oh, okay. She was 104. French drummer, French female drummer. No, 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 American. I Viola, was American. Viola Smith. Okay. So I, th I, thought, I thought you said that they were building these drum sets and this trend was coming to Europe, but we didn't, we didn't know how to play them. They start to build, to build, and to, yes. but to sell them in yeah. USA or in Europe. Yeah. The first customers was the women. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Really. It, it, it goes counter narrative to the idea that we have about female musicians. That's very interesting as well. And you, you yeah. can find everything, much information about that uh, on the net, starting from Viola Smith. Wow. Because you have magazines. Special magazines for for women drummer since a long time. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's a research on its own. And some pictures are really mm, spicy. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> I send you a picture of a band they all necked. Really? Yeah. From what? From <laughs> what? What? From what time? From what uh, uh, period? Fifties. In the fifties. Okay. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are talking from a research from a research standpoint. <laughs> you want to ask this question? You have in, uh, one place for me in this band, please. See. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. How do you see going forward? And after that, <laughs> the first drum kit uh, was sold uh, with a um, little, little, uh, um, little team of um, uh, traps. Mm -hmm. So you you bought in America a big case. Inside you have your bass drum. On the side you have your cymbals, your snare drums, and if, and after you have a little box with traps in it. Mm -hmm. So you're a drummer, and on your drum, you can put some traps just to, to make some noise for, in funny music, in cakewalk or jazz or everything, see? Yeah. But this turned to a um, musical ac accompaniment for cinema. So after, from the first drummer, and the first women drummer, some get works for cinema coming from the drums. Yeah. 
because the traps were in, in the case. So uh, maybe uh, in 25 or 30, in the 30s, um, some women worked with traps for the cinema. Okay. Again, it's cro it's cross narrative, right? It's it's against the narrative of 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 female musicians, and it's very interesting. Especially when we we think about drums, are we think it about mostly a male? Uh, when we think about drum drum playing drums during the twentieth century, we think about male musicians, right? Not female musicians. Yes, yes, but they were, they were, they were num numerous. Yeah. It's an evidence. You think there's less today? We don't, we don't know. No, no. No. no, no, no. But um, many women work for, for, for the sound in the cinema in the six, in six, six 50s and 60s in France. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. They could be um, the, the wife of, of the director. Mm. Yeah. See? Because it's not a really hard job, but you have to, uh, to, be, uh, to be a woman, to, to be organized. See, mm. just like uh, yeah. making, make, uh, just like cooking or... Any task like that, yeah. I think to be a good um, interpret of, interpre yes, performer of, um, of traps directly on, on, on the screen, you know, because yeah. you have to work directly on, on, on the moves. Um, women behavior are best than the men behavior mm. because they organize and concent concentrate Yeah. Is the docs the docs talk when you read articles, see pictures about all these periods in French, in France, in USA, mm -hmm. in Italy? It, it talks. He said. He said that. Yeah. 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 We are over one hour in our conversation. Maybe, maybe we, we need a, for, for the drums, we would need another hour. Yes. I was really... Oh, you, anyway, we, I have everything, uh, everything is in place. We, we can continue later. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I have also a uh, diaporama. Okay. To send to you. Or I wanted, I can send the PowerPoint to you. If you want to, uh... yeah. you can either send it or if in the future, in, a, in next week or a couple of weeks, you can actually show it to me and we can, we can record it. I, 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 would thought, like. I, thought, I thought I could, I could uh, send them there to share with you. Yeah, but we, sh we should do that. We should do a, a meeting just for that because I was just, I was so interesting this, so interested this time in, in First World War. And I was interested in, in that young man that has made this connection between the, the COVID pandemic and the trenches in the First World War. Mm -hmm. And we can make a session about drums because that's what you're working now. Yes. That would be, that would be interesting. And you, you, could present, you, can show, you could present that and we could talk about that. That would be great. And I'm also, I'm actually, it's not my research. I just found it very curious. I can share this with you as a way of finishing this time, this interview, and opening an, an opportunity to have that about the drums. In Estonia, I went there to, to, to research bagpipes. And I was amazed at the fact that the vast, 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 vast majority of pipers in Estonia are women. And I talked with one, one of them, this lady, which is a professor at university, started playing in the 90s. 
in the beginning of the 90s with uh, it was this boom of back, uh, this resurgence of bagpipes and they started teaching them at the academy so she was is one of the the one I don't want to say one of the more veterans because she's a lady, but you understand what I mean. She's, she started in 1991, something like that. And I addressed this point with her and she said, uh, yes, we recognize it. We don't know why men stopped being interested. There's, there's a phenomenon here. Mm -hmm. And this is clearly a women's world now. So bagpipes are a female territory. And that's very interesting. That's very interesting because we feel that for centuries, centuries it was a male territory. We know from the iconography, you know. So, so this, this, this. I think that this, this discussion on gender is so interesting, as long as we make we keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. But when when you speak that, speak that when you spoke about the drummers, yeah, that need the explanation anyway. Yes, yes, on on several directions, you know. And what you said about the drummers, I found it so interesting that we can have this instantaneous uh, uh, picture that maybe does not relate to historical facts. It's just an idea that we have. All drummers are men. It has always been like that. Well, maybe today there's some women, but, but it's because we are all modern now, <laughs> you know? But, but <laughs> there's nothing modern maybe about that. Or maybe by, that has been... Yeah. Or by necessity. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should end. Uh, um, because and I have, uh, I have one question. Question. Yeah. Um, are you in, um, because I'm, I revisited my uh, thesis. I have many mm -hmm. things about papers. Yes. Are you interested? Totally. <laughs> not, not, not not for talk, but I'm not. I'm interested to... in the material. Yeah. Yes, for you. Of course. Don't you ask you uh, this question, how they could go to the enemy without arms, without guns, just their bike? Their... No? They, they had, they had a, they had a backpacks that's, it's stronger than, it's stronger than weapons. That's what they thought. <laughs>